Welcome to the first page, our video series featuring Thomas C. Foster, author of How to Read Literature Like a Professor. With Professor Foster as our guide, discover that the first page, the first paragraph, even sometimes the first sentence of a novel, is the key for what is to come. The opening provides up to 18 important clues to the rest of the novel. Things like style, tone, mood, narrative identity and attitude, theme, and point of view are all here. So watch carefully as Foster delves into the first page of such HarperCollins classroom favorites as To Kill a Mockingbird, Their Eyes Were Watching God, and The Bean Trees. The Grass is Singing by Doris Lessing. Hello again and welcome. There are all sorts of ways to begin a novel or any narrative. You can, naturally, begin at the beginning. Not very original, but sometimes effective. Or you can begin in the middle of things, a choice so common it has its own term, in media res, Latin for, more or less, in the middle of things. And sometimes you can begin at the end of that road, as Doris Lessing chooses to do in her first novel, The Grass is Singing. Mary Turner, wife of Richard Turner, a farmer at Anguissi, was found murdered on the front veranda of their homestead yesterday morning. The houseboy, who has been arrested has confessed to the crime. No motive has been discovered. It is thought he was in search of valuables. This is set as a brief news clipping under the headline, Murder Mystery. It is not, however, a murder mystery. Or not in the sense that we customarily use that term. The suspect has confessed, and there will be no serious effort to unravel this crime, no justice-restoring detective figure. Moreover, in a murder mystery, the murder happens at or very near the beginning of the timeline of the novel. We watch the detective move from the unsolved crime to apprehending the killer. Lessing's purpose is quite different. She wants to establish an endpoint in order to examine that extremely flawed society in which it occurs. Two key words pop up in this tiny article, Anguissi and Houseboy. I don't know about you, but in my corner of heaven, there are no place names beginning with the NG consonant combination, which suggests Southern Africa, in this case, the former Southern Rhodesia, as no other. And Houseboy invokes a constellation of warnings about race and racism. The author has given us a place, an event, and a social problem all before her narrative proper begins. Those will be borne out in the next paragraph. By the time we reach its end, we are told that many white readers of the newspaper will be wholly unsurprised by the news because, as she says, when natives steal, murder, or rape, that is the feeling white people have. I hasten to add that she is speaking of white people in a very specific place and time, which is to say in southern Rhodesia during the 1940s. A great many details will be fleshed out in the rest of the novel, of course. But the basics are all there in the first couple of paragraphs. The mystery, ultimately, lies not in the who, but in the why behind the murder. There's a kind of tragic inevitability about the story that is established in the first moments. We know what's coming and are powerless to stop it. The opening is wonderfully efficient. That's something a lot of great novels do. Get off to a quick and sure start. Not all, of course, Marcel Proust is in no particular hurry to get Swan's Way started, but since it's the first volume of seven comprising about a million and a half words, where's the fire? For most writers, however, there are advantages to clarity of purpose right from the start. More importantly, sending clear signs is a major service to readers. As I've said before, the opening is the first and most important lesson in how to read the novel. It tells us what to watch for, what may turn out to be important, what the narrative rhythm and design may feel like. It can give us setting, attitude, theme, tone, mood, and all in a page or less. What else could we want? For more information about the first page, please visit www.harperacademic.com.